Today I'm going to go through the parts of the Olympus CX31 microscope that we use in microbiology at Mesa Community College. In this video I'm going to go through the different parts of the microscope and the functions of each one of those parts. I'm going to begin with the power switch. As you face the microscope, the power switch is on the right hand side of the microscope and it's a simple rocker switch. So this is your power switch. You basically just rock the switch on to turn the microscope on. This is a light microscope and you can see here in the front as I move to the front of the microscope, light is coming from the base and it's coming through this part of the microscope which is called the base diaphragm. The base diaphragm is one of the ways that you can control intensity of light coming into the scope. You can see that there's actually a ribbed knob on the outside of the base diaphragm. You can let the base diaphragm be all the way open and have the full amount of light coming from the bulb and Entering the microscope or you can see as I turn it you can decrease the intensity of light coming into the scope where basically none comes in so this base diaphragm is one of the ways that you can control intensity of light coming into the microscope another way that you can control intensity of light coming into the microscope is with the iris diaphragm it's underneath the stage and it's a little black knob that you can move back and forth so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what happens. Here is the base diaphragm is all the way open. The iris diaphragm is now all the way open. I'm going to come up to the top so you can see what happens. As I move the iris diaphragm over, you can see less and less and less light is actually coming into the microscope. So now the iris diaphragm is all the way closed. I'm moving it. Now it's all the way open. So the base diaphragm here at the bottom and the iris diaphragm here underneath the stage are two of the things that can control the amount of light or intensity of light in this case coming into the microscope. The other thing that can control intensity of light coming into the microscope is this knob right here. This is the rheostat. It's right underneath the power switch and it's like a dimmer switch for the light for the light bulb that's in the microscope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the rheostat right now is turned all the way on or it's letting the maximum amount of light come into the microscope. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn the rheostat knob down and you can see I basically stopped all the light from coming in. So again now I'm going to turn it back all the way up. So the three things that can control intensity of light coming into your microscope are the iris diaphragm, the base diaphragm, and the rheostat. Now I want to talk about the condenser and the condenser knob. The condenser is going to be a way to concentrate the beam of light coming from the light bulb in the base of the microscope. And the condenser knob is how we're going to actually move the condenser. So the condenser knob is over on the left hand side of the scope as you face it. So it's a single knob right there. And I'm going to move the knob so you can see what the condenser is. You guys can see the whole big giant condenser is actually what's moving up and what's moving down. So when the condenser is in the lowest position, it works like a flashlight, meaning there's light coming from the base, from the bulb, and that light spreads out like a flashlight would, and it lights up the whole entire stage of the microscope. It's going to light up the entire slide. That's the best thing to do when you don't know exactly where the microbes are on the slide that you're viewing. When you move the condenser up, you're actually taking that light that's coming from the bulb in the base of the microscope and you're spotlighting it, you're concentrating the beam in a much smaller area. It's like instead of using a flashlight to light up a big area, you're using a spotlight because you know where the microbes are and you want to really try to illuminate just that area. This is a binocular microscope so it has two oculars or eyepieces. The oculars or eyepieces allow you to view the specimen and they also have a magnification of 10x. Our microscopes are also um, fitted with a what's called a diopter ring. So this diopter ring, which is on one of your two eyepieces, allows you to adjust for the fact that your two eyes might not have the exact same vision or prescription. Now I want to talk about the mechanical stage and the mechanical stage adjustment knobs. The mechanical stage is right here and it's where your slide is going to sit so you can view it underneath the microscope and the mechanical stage knob is right here on the right hand side of the scope it's basically a silver stick with two knobs on the end of it these two knobs are actually going to adjust the mechanical stage and allow you to center your slide in the center of the field of view so you can see there's two knobs on the mechanical stage 
knob. There's a lower knob and there's an upper knob. So first I'm going to move the lower knob and I'm going to put the camera up so you can see what it's doing to the mechanical stage. So as I move the lower knob, you can see that the stage is moving to the left and to the right. And then I'm going to move the upper knob and I'm going to show you again what it's doing to the stage. The upper knob is moving the mechanical stage forward and back. So again, you're going to use the mechanical stage to center your specimen in your field of view. Now I'm going to go through the coarse and fine focus knob. So the coarse and fine focus knobs are found on both sides of the microscope. The large outer knob is called the coarse focus knob. The small inner knob is called the fine focus knob. We're going to use the coarse focus knob under scan and under low power. We're going to use the fine focus knob under scan, under low, under high, and under oil. So I'm going to show you how this works basically. I'm going to actually start by moving my coarse focus knob only. So I'm going to be moving the coarse focus knob and I want you guys to look at what it does to the actual stage of the microscope. So here I go, I'm going to use the coarse focus knob and you can see it's moving the mechanical stage up and it's moving it a lot. So this is why I'm going to move it back down using coarse focus. We only use it under scan and under low. Now I'm going to come back over and I'm going to use the fine focus knob, but I'm going to show you that when we use the fine focus knob, it doesn't even move the stage enough that we can see it. So you use coarse focus for scan and for low. You use fine focus for scan, low, high, and oil. Now I want to talk about the revolving nose piece and the objective lenses. The revolving nose pieces have the objective lenses on the end of it. You just basically can revolve the nose piece and actually put different objective lenses into place over your specimen. So the first objective that we have has a red stripe on it. It has a magnification of 4x and it's called the scanning lens. Then we have the yellow stripe lens. It has a magnification of 10x. It's called the low power objective. The blue stripe lens has a magnification of 40x and it's called the high power objective. And the white stripe lens has a magnification of 100x and it's called the oil immersion lens. To determine total magnification, you take ocular, which is 10x, times objective. So in this case, it would be ocular, which is 10x, times 4, because this is the 4x or scanning objective, so our total magnification would be 40x.